Hi everyone, it's Annabelle. Welcome back to my channel. Today we're going to be taking a look at some of the orchids that we've had in bloom for the month of February. We're also going to be announcing the giveaway winner for the Mars TS600 Grow Light, which will be announced at the end of the video. So with that said, let's get started. The orchid we have in front of us right now is an Eric Young Foundation Miltoniopsis Hybrid, which I converted to a self-watering system in inorganic media with a combination of synthic, lacquer and pumice um, back in autumn. I'll link you to that video where I kind of talk a little bit about converting all of my oncidium types to semi-hydro type systems with inorganic media. So they all kind of stalled a little bit in that they didn't bloom from their growth at the time they just concentrated on making more roots so I've now finally got my Miltoniopsis kind of starting to spike again and fully established in their new setup I should repotted them at the right time because they had new growths but it did seem to stop them flowering just from the repot this hybrid I'm a little bit confused about the IDs of because when I got the Eric Young Foundation hybrids I repotted them all at once and I think I mixed the tags up because I found that one of them was um, the ID was incorrect when it rebloomed. Um, so I'm not certain of any of my Eric Young Foundation Miltoniopsis anymore. So I'm going to try and sort that out at some point, see if I can go back through emails or records because I had a bit of an issue with one of them um, being missed off my order. So this one, it says it's Hanover Fine Violet. I'm not sure if it is or not. It's a gorgeous pink to deep kind of magenta miltoniopsis with beautiful white edging and a light floral fragrance this one's only just kind of opened up so it tends to be that the fragrance intensifies over the first week that they're open it tends to be that miltoniopsis is the most fragrant kind of late morning so i often miss the fragrance so that's something i'm going to have to monitor but all of mine are fragrant to some extent some more than others this one is kind of mildly fragrant at the moment nothing overpowering it's very healthy Miltoniopsis and got a few little leaf crinkles where it was adjusting to the new setup but it never lost any roots I'll just show you the root system that it's got now um, got nice plump pseudobulbs as you can see and it's produced two spikes from two different growths and I think we've got another spike just starting all of my Eric Young Foundation Miltoniopsis do have slightly bigger flowers than normal and they seem to produce less flowers so I guess there's a trade-off but they are absolutely huge flowers um, the size of my hand they're really really beautiful so I'm happy with that trade-off to be honest and they are quite long lasting um, but Miltoniopsis in general do last a little while they're very very showy in general Miltoniopsis but particularly the Eric Young hybrids are really bred for size, vigour and um, size of flowers and the display they put on if you want to learn more about the Eric Young Foundation I will link it down below it's a foundation started by a kind of orchid um, connoisseur named Eric Young and there's some information on the website about him if you want to know more. So I'll just show you the root system of this guy now that it's adapted to the uh, inorganic system. So it's got plenty of roots down into the media now and it seems to really enjoy the synthic. Um, the Miltoniops in general do kind of bury into the synthic where they can. I had to adjust some of the mixes and put more pumice into them to provide a bit more aeration because I did have one Miltoniopsis start to rot which I pulled apart straight away and I think I've stopped but all my other Miltoniopsis are absolutely fine and adjusting really well. You can see lots of new root tips getting down into the media there. Um, so yeah, they put out root systems really quickly. Very, very vigorous hybrids that I've got and it, yeah adapted with no problems really the mottling on the leaves here is where i sprayed for neem oil um, i had a spider mite outbreak midwinter so i kind of over sprayed them with neem oil a bit and um, these ones now are very big so they're actually resting up against my light so they did probably get a little bit too warm with the neem oil fresh on them uh, oils kind of intensify the amount of light that they're getting so you can get a bit of chlorosis if there's oil droplets kind of sat on the leaves which i think you can kind of see that that's the cause because of the mottling effect that I've got on a couple of the leaves that were resting up against the light after spraying so that's definitely something to watch out for which I didn't but the display on this Miltoniopsis is gorgeous Miltoniopsis is one of my favorite orchids just for the display and the fragrance that they put out and also um, arguably they're bigger in my environment compared to kind of what they are supposed to be like I find them I don't want to jinx it but I find them relatively easy growers um, they just like a lot of moisture so that is the Miltoniopsis pink with white edging 
the tag says Hanover Fine Violet. Not so sure if that's correct, but that's what we've got at the moment. Really, really beautiful, stunning, stunning hybrid. As you can see, it's quite a large plant. And we've got the two flower spikes. One has three flowers on and one has four flowers with a bud just opening. Very, very showy display with these beautiful white edged flowers, which kind of acts as a border for that deep, deep pinkish red coloration and the really beautiful center of the flower with the yellow kind of bleeding through to orange um, i really love this the contrast with miltoniopsis which they often have and the little white splashes in there so that is a miltoniopsis eric young foundation hybrid that i've got in bloom at the moment and we've got more spikes on the way from my miltoniopsis so hopefully i'll be able to show you more of these guys soon i have quite a few eric young foundation hybrids and they're all super impressive Next up we have a No ID Inca Orchids Oncidium Intergeneric Hybrid which is possibly what they list as a Bartley Schwartz variation, the Highland White, which I think must be some sort of a hybrid because it doesn't identify exactly as Bartley Schwartz but they call it Highland White. Um, this is quite a close match to that so that's what I believe it is but again it's a No ID Garden Centre Oncidium type. Really beautiful floral sweet fragrance that I really enjoy and it has a tendency to produce very long flower spikes with quite spaced out flowers along the stem so you don't get like a massive clustering display the flowers themselves are quite large though and they do have a wonderful fragrance and some lovely contrasting kind of burgundy coloration with white and yellow splashes which I really enjoy so this one's a very easy grower I repotted it and it kind of took straight off into the new mix very large plant with very kind of leathery glossy leaves that seems to be relatively resistant to spider mites they didn't seem to want to touch it i think spider mites like kind of more delicate leaves if they can get hold of them um so that's the second flower stem that is produced which as you can see is kind of huge and doesn't fit on my shelf so i have to have it kind of leaning forward off the edge of the shelf and this is the first shorter flower spike that it produced that it's flowering from at the moment but with that second spike we should have a display for quite some time because these are quite long last flowers they're not delicate and papery they're quite rigid and waxy and firm and they're very structured which I really enjoy it kind of reminds me of um, angel wings or something similar not necessarily butterfly shape but something in flight definitely they have a gorgeous gorgeous red splashing on the lip and a very large lip in contrast to the petals and sepals which are kind of flared back really beautiful hybrid very easy to grow i definitely recommend it as a good oncidium type for um, a fragrant oncidium for beginners because it seems to be very forgiving of media and environment i grow this in my orchid room so it's kind of warm temperatures with self-watering system with a combination of leca and pumice it has very large elongated pseudo bulbs and very large leaves so as with many oncidiums, as it grows, it does become an incredibly large plant. Um, so it, space can be an issue, which is why I'm kind of stopping with my oncidiums and oncidium intergenerics. They do get very large. They take up a lot of shelf space. Their spikes are incredibly large. So you do need very tall shelves. And I'm kind of like, I don't want to get any more. We've got a second spike starting here. They are such incredibly rewarding orchids, but I think I've kind of got enough. So I'm saving any new purchases for kind of more special Oncidium in generic types and maybe Miltoniopsis, although I do have quite a few Miltoniopsis now. So I'm trying to be a little bit selective about what I'm buying. I've got a really good root system. They didn't die off during the transition. You can see that some of the older roots are kind of more stained looking. Those are still alive. They are perfectly firm and they're in some cases branching. So sometimes older roots just they don't look as good and vibrant and as healthy as newer roots, but they're still absolutely fine and functional. Eventually they will die off. Roots do have a lifespan, but they are fine to leave on for now until that happens. Just showing you the whole plant again with its long spike and um, as a kind of warning for shelf space requirements. This one's probably quite suited to a windowsill for that reason because on a windowsill you're not really limited for height but as with many oncidiums they can be susceptible to burning in bright sunlight so all of mine are grown on shelves under LED lights. So that is a no ID oncidium intergeneric, possibly Bartley Schwartz Highland White um, it's an Inca orchids hybrid and they do have hybrids listed on the website but I wouldn't rely on them. They're not 100% accurate. 
Next up, we have my beautiful Miltonia Sunset. Some sunsets are identified as fragrant. I do not have a fragrant variety. There's no fragrance detectable for my Miltonia Sunset. Um, this is a Miltonia Hybrid, commonly available in garden centers quite often. It's quite an easy grower. Miltonias in general tend to be easier growers than Miltoniopsis for the home environment um, in general. I think that's the general consensus. I treat them both the same, to be honest, out of necessity, and they both do fine. In theory, Miltonias are more kind of intermediate to warm growing, whereas Miltoniopsis are the, what they used to refer to as Colombian type Miltonias. So they're high elevation uh, cloud forest growers, whereas Miltonias kind of grow at lower elevations and tend to be um, warmer growers than Miltoniopsis. I give them the same care and they both respond well. So I think as long as you're providing enough moisture, you can get away with growing Miltonias and Miltoniopsis in a similar kind of way. A uh, general Oncidium type culture for Miltonias it would be my general advice. So the Miltonia sunset has these gorgeous flowers that obviously are reminiscent of a sunset, hence the name, with oranges and pinks fading into a kind of purples and whites. It's quite a large Miltonia and it has a kind of leaning um, growth nature. So each new growth tends to lean forward a bit. And something quite interesting about Miltonias and particularly the Miltonia sunset I've found is that the new roots that are produced tend to get trapped and stopped by the leaves or the bracts of the new growth. So I actually do a little bit of surgery and remove the outer leaves of new growth to allow those rows and rows of new roots to get down into the media. This one's very healthy. I did have a little bit of shriveling when I first got it. One thing I would say about Miltonia sunsets is I do think they have natural pink coloration in the rhizome because I've seen so many reports of fusarium in Miltonia sunsets. My, I myself, when I cut the rhizome, found a pink rhizome and thought, oh, well, maybe it's got fusarium. I don't think it ever had fusarium, to be perfectly honest. I think that there's natural n pink coloration in the rhizome that is a little bit misleading potentially and maybe that's just the thing for some hybrids i don't think mine has fusarium um, but it does have a pink ring in the rhizome so that's definitely something to um don't burn your plant just because you find it like see take it with other symptoms see how it's doing this one i put a top layer of the um, danish molar clay which is a branded as a cat litter because I had noticed that it does enjoy a little bit more moisture on the top layer and that actually seems to be working very well. I'm a little bit hesitant about this um, Sunny Cat Danish Molar Clay product just because of the kind of fizzing that I noticed in my media test but I'm trying it out in kind of baby steps and it seems to be working well for this guy because I noticed that the pebble top layer was a little too dry for those root tips. It seems to really love moisture even more than my Miltoniopsis to be honest. So um, I've put that layer on which as you can see stays very moist and it changes colour when it dries which is very useful for me. So that is my beautiful Miltonia Sunset which has put out two new growths this year and has a flower spike on each at the moment. There's one just developing on the latest one also. Beautiful Miltonia hybrid that encompasses my favourite colour combinations and is an absolutely beautiful one to have on the, your shelf. It um, is sadly not fragrant or my variety isn't fragrant, which is the only downfall because I'm kind of trying to just keep more fragrant orchids. I really enjoy orchids that do have a fragrance, but when you're this beautiful, maybe you don't need a fragrance to earn your place on my shelf. Next, I'm just going to quickly show you my Miltonia flavescens, which is a species Miltonia that has gorgeous sprays of star-shaped flowers and is reportedly fragrant. I currently have four spikes and a fifth just starting on this plant, and I had to repot it recently because it was growing out of the pot. Um, so I just shuffled it back in its pot a little bit rather than stress it too much with a repot. It's in a mix of Lecca and Ceramis. Um, it's a little bit more moisture-loving and has very, very fine roots compared to other Miltonias. So I'm keeping my fingers crossed and praying that these spikes don't blast because we might have an impressive display on the way. Next up we have my Epidendrum radicans type which is a beautiful orange type Epidendrum. There's no detectable fragrance and I'm not sure if this is the Epidendrum radicans species or a hybrid. I picked this up at a garden centre as a single growth division along with a Zygopetalum and an Oncidium where it looks like they just pulled off a flowering new growth from larger plants. Um, it was a little bit strange they just had these tiny single growths with flowers on um, for like three pounds each. So I picked them up in these little cute clay pots. Um, and this one's grown really, really well. The zygo, 
I'm doing actually better with it than I usually do with zygos. Um, but this one's been super, super easy to grow. I potted it in a mix of ceramis and leca with a lot of ceramis in because it's a terrestrial type orchid that likes quite a lot of moisture and has these gorgeous um, upside down flowers that have the lip kind of pointing upwards in the flower, which is shaped like a flying bird, which is absolutely beautiful. The flowers themselves are kind of iridescent and metallic. They glitter in the light. And when you get up close to them in bright light, it's really, really stunning. And they have this wonderful, vibrant neon orange color, which reminds me of flames or it's just so beautiful with the gradiated orange on it so I absolutely love it not fragrant as I said um, but you get a sequential display that blooms for some time because as the old flowers start to fade you can see these new flower buds coming up in the middle so it, it'll bloom for some time and we do actually have a second spike on a second new growth that it put out very easy grower and I'm really enjoying growing it. These hybrids can get absolutely huge though so I'm a little bit nervous of how big it's going to get because at the moment it is just a baby um, but it's blooming reliably for me so I'm really happy with that and I'm happy that it's decided to bloom. They are quite high light orchids so I did put this one right next to a grow light. You can kind of see how it sparkles in the light a little bit. They're really really beautiful. Unfortunately the um, hybrids that I really love which are the kind of pinkish one I think it's called wedding bells or something uh, don't seem to be very available in the UK or I would probably get one um, but these are warm to hot growing orchids so the space that they require requires them to be in a home rather than out in a greenhouse which does kind of limit how many you can have um, they would be ideal if you're living in a warmer climate to keep outside to be perfectly honest I've seen them growing successfully in normal potting soil uh, they seem very very hardy resilient and adaptable so that is the epidendrum radicans type which is the only epidendrum type that i do actually have next up we have the phalaenopsis zeng min pixels which is one of the few surviving orchids from my orchids deluxe experience uh, i won't go into details on that but this one has bloomed for me. This is the second time it's bloomed now. It's quite a small, compact Phalaenopsis. I'm not sure how big it will get because a lot of the um, species Phalaenopsis will bloom quite small. Depends on the species, but the Polychylus subgenus do tend to bloom at a smaller or younger age. So this one, really, really beautiful hybrid. And this is my favorite kind of color combination, yellows, oranges, and pinks all together. Absolutely love. So this Phalaenopsis ticks all the boxes and it has a really wonderful kind of star-shaped flower that I really enjoy. Beautiful contrasting purple lip and a slight mild citrusy fragrance to go with it. This might intensify as the plant matures and becomes um, larger with more energy resources. It's got a really beautiful profile. It's actually quite flat, but it has a slight cupping and I actually really like cupped Phalaenopsis like the javanica um, i'm not sure why a lot of people don't like the more closed flowers but i find them really cute so i really like the shape and profile of this flower as well as you can see it's got some slight barring this is something that varies between seedlings with this particular hybrid and this is one of the few that have actually established from that order and um i still have so in that regard it's actually very special it's a very special little hybrid and i really like the zeng min hybrids because there are quite a few um so if you just google phalaenopsis zeng min or look at blue nanta or his roots there's a lot of hybrids from that i guess originator that are really nice really really cute beautiful hybrids so i definitely think that those are really interesting crosses and I absolutely love the colour and form of this particular flower. So that is the Phalaenopsis Zeng Min Pixels. Next, we have a hybrid that I have shown you in the last What's in Bloom, but I couldn't resist showing you again. This is the Phalaenopsis Yafon Deep Coffee crossed with Zeng Min Turtle Dove. The buds on one of these spikes from this cross has now fully opened and I really, really appreciate this cross. I think it's probably one of my favourite Phalaenopsis, which is saying something because I have quite a few of these kind of novelty hybrids or polychylus hybrids. Um, but this one is amazing. The yellow 
colour doesn't fade. It's been open for over a month, some of these blooms, and look at them, they're still going strong. This one um, has really beautiful, rigid, waxy flowers that are kind of glossy and um, really beautiful and really, really fragrant. It has a very strong fragrance, um, which is even more intense now that all of the buds have opened from this branch and a couple from another branch it has. And the fragrance is very like lemon air freshener it's not exactly like a lemon but it's kind of a slightly artificial but very strong lemony fragrance that i really enjoy it's kept under quite bright lights and it seems to enjoy this i've not got any chlorosis or yellowing of the leaves at all and it seems to be growing well so it seems to take reasonably high light which is quite typical for some of the more species or closer to species phalaenopsis they tend to be able to take a little bit more light than some of the complex hybrids that we see in shops and I would definitely recommend this hybrid if you can get hold of it. I know in America this isn't um, as available. So there's a Phalaenopsis which is very similar with similar parentage and a similar look called the Phalaenopsis Little Pixie or Phalaenopsis Christmas or Yafon Christmas. I don't have any experience with those particular crosses but from looking into the background of this cross I can see that they are quite similar and visually they sometimes appear similar depending on the bit of seedling variation so that's definitely something to look into so this is definitely one of my favorite fowls at the moment that could change obviously but i think it'll always have a place in my heart just because of how fragrant it is how long lasting the blooms are and the fact that the yellow doesn't fade and it's got this beautiful yellow white contrast which i absolutely love planted in semi-hydroponics with Lekka which it took to with no issues and doesn't seem to mind the dry top layer at all and growing in my little converted orchid wardrobe under the Gemma uh, 100 watt plant light so they're kind of higher powered and it's actually hanging up as you can see it's in a hanging pot uh, so it's actually hanging very close to the grow light again with no ill effects so I think it quite likes the higher light we currently have three spikes on this plant one of the spikes is buried under a leaf and even when it flowers will probably be difficult to see but the other spike is currently working on a couple more buds and it's just got a really nice effect I really enjoy it it's kind of stalled one leaf while it's working on the flowers but I'm hoping that that will resume once it's um, completed these so that is the Phalaenopsis Yafon Deep Coffee crossed with Zeng Min Turtle Dove. Beautiful, bright yellow, waxy flowers with a wonderful fragrance. Next up we have the Phalaenopsis Tzu Chiang Tetralitz crossed with LD's Bear Queen. I've shown this one before but this blooming is uh, even more intense coloration coming through than the last and I think this is because of the slightly cooler temperatures. It last bloomed in summer so we've definitely got cooler temperatures which tend to induce more pigmented blooms than blooms that are produced in warmer temperatures. It's a really stunning coppery pink metallic bloom that I absolutely adore the shape of and I love the metallic nature to it. Currently got one bud open and one bird I think nearly open. These aren't particularly large blooms. It can produce a much better display than this on a more established plant. As you can see my one is relatively mature but the last two leaves it's produced for me have been smaller than the leaves it produced before it came to me. It's just getting established and it's got a good root system so I'm hoping for more and more size progression on the leaves as we get a more established healthy plant and this should translate to more spikes and more blooms hopefully per spike because I know this one can produce several blooms per spike. I really love the shape of this. It reminds me a lot of the Tetraspis and I think it does have the Tetraspis in. You can see it's got a very fuzzy lip which tends to be indicative of Tetraspis in my experience. It seems to indicate that it is a Tetraspis cross and I just find it adorable. Very, very slight fragrance, but it's very mild. Again, mildly citrus fragrance, so I think that the fragrance from this comes from potentially Bellina heritage. Um, there's no hint of cinnamon or anything, so I don't think it's getting any fragrance from any Violacea in its parentage. I'll put all of the names down in the description, so if you wanna have a look on orchid roots at the parentage, you can just copy and paste from the description. And that is the Phalaenopsis Su Chiang Tetralitz crossed with LD's Bear Queen. Beautiful, gorgeous shaped, gorgeous coloured blooms. 
Next up we have the absolutely stunning Phalaenopsis Joy Fairy Tale which I have shown you guys before and it is pretty much constantly in bloom but I did want to show it again because we've got a few more buds on a new spike. This one is very fragrant and it's a fragrance that is very similar to the Phalaenopsis Sweet Memory Leodoro if any of you are familiar with that. Quite a citrusy pleasant fragrance that's quite mild but intensifies when you get more and more flowers. This is a polaric variety of Phalaenopsis meaning that the petals imitate the lip almost exactly. Now Peloria can vary between different Phalaenopsis or different hybrids to some kind of just vague imitations of the lip to a nearly identical replicas and in this case you've got petals that are nearly identical to the lip. I've had some flowers open upside down that you really can't tell but the lip is the narrowed um, structure at the base of the flower here. To me, the symmetry of this orchid is just perfect. I think it's the most stunning alien looking display I've ever seen and I it just suckered me in. I absolutely adore it. I love the flowers, I love the colour combination, I love the fragrance and I love the shape. It does remind me of a kind of alien sci-fi plant that you would see on a sci-fi movie. It's really gorgeous and from the side obviously you can see the effect a little bit more. Now this is quite a large plant. It's one of the oldest Phalaenopsis that I have. It was one of the first ones I got when I was starting to get into more kind of closer to species hybrids. This isn't a uh, primary hybrid by any means. It's quite a complex hybrid, but it does have quite a few species in the parentage. And as you can see, it's got a very compact growth habit. It's just become huge. Um, so this is actually the Phalaenopsis I have with the most leaves, I think. And it hasn't ever dropped any in my care so it's turning into a little bit of a mini vanda but it's absolutely beautiful and it stays compact even though it's obviously growing a lot upwards at the moment so that is the phalaenopsis joy fairy tale next up we have a primary hybrid between neophonesia or vanda falcata and renanthera vietnamensis this is an absolutely beautiful hybrid. I got this one from Elsner Orchidine in my first order from them, which I unboxed in front of you guys, and it came as a very healthy plant that rapidly put out a spike. And this is the result. As you can see, it's inherited a lot of the traits from the Neophonesia, but you definitely have the shape of the Renanthera really coming through there. The Vietnamensis is a more kind of orangey Renanthera, it's not like a bright red one. So you've got kind of a peachy effect here and I think the contrast on the lip and the lip shape has really been influenced by the Renanthera. Unfortunately there is no fragrance coming through from the Neophonesia parent, but I think this is okay. I don't always need everything to be fragrant, it's always an added bonus. Um, and with Neophonesia hybrids, it's kind of hit and miss. Some of them are very fragrant and some of them it seems to just completely miss the Neophonesia fragrance altogether. So that's worth bearing in mind. Um, I'm not sure if there are any other Renanthera or Neophonesia hybrids that are fragrant, but this one doesn't seem to be. So you've got this gorgeous red and pink splash on the lip and the lip itself looks like a little stunted um, tongue I guess it looks like someone's sticking their tongue out it's really funny and I just think the blooms are so cute on this and the way they fold back as well it's very star shaped and kind of uh, beautiful and classy I think from this bloom that's how I would describe it it's unfortunate like I said that it isn't fragrant but I think we can forgive it with the way it looks and the gorgeous little pink splashes and I also really like the fact that the spike is a kind of pinkish burgundy colour. I find that really interesting and really pretty and it really adds to the effect. It's a very compact growing vandacious hybrid which obviously the size has been influenced massively by the Neophonesia. Um, so it's great because you can fit this easily on a shelf. It's grown under my LED lights so it's not even like under my proper grow lights just the bar under counter type LED strip lights that I use. So that's the Renanthera Vietnamensis crossed with Neophonesia falcata. Next up we have the Vandeco stylus uh, loose neary which up until the reclassification of Neophonesia was Neo stylus loose neary which is probably what you'll find it under the most. This one is the first blooming for me. I've shown you guys before my Neophonesia collection. I had an original Neo stylus loose neary hybrid that I struggled with for a long time and I decided to get this as a replacement for it and then managed to recover it. So I now have two but this is the first time I've seen one bloom and I was quite shocked by the nectar spur on it. I was expecting it to be kind of more downward and maybe um, more influenced by the Neophonesia. I feel like it almost looks Aerides like with how backward it is. It's like it's been playing with hair gel and slicked its hair back into a little ponytail. It's very very cute. Um, 
and I love how jutting the lip is. It's a very striking bloom and these three blooms on the left are forming this really lovely cascade effect. The fragrance is absolutely wonderful. It's like floral bubblegum. I absolutely love it. I would describe this as very similar to the Cilogeny Ocracia or Natida, which I think are synonyms. Um, very similar to that one. So that's the Neostylus or Vandaka Stylus Loose Neri. Next, I have another fowl with a little bit of a funny story. This is Phalaenopsis ambitrana dark yellow crossed with Phalaenopsis bellina. And this has a very strong fragrance of musty lemon juice. Kind of lemon juice, but with a bit of a kind of sour, musky, musty hint that I don't particularly like. And it is quite strong, so bear that in mind. Probably coming from the ambitrana side of it. Now, the story behind this is I got this as a seedling from Orchid Garden and it had rot when I got it. So I basically had to remove its two leaves. It then put out another one, which is the one you can see kind of behind, which then again proceeded to get this weird bacterial rot at the end, which I had to cut off. So I ended up with a seedling fowl with basically half a leaf left. And then it put out this ridiculous leaf that you can see here. Um, so it's basically shaming me with this huge leaf and that's basically its only real leaf. Hopefully it'll put out some more soon and it decided to bloom for me. Um, it's got a really good root system so I've led it but yeah it looks a little bit ridiculous and please don't judge me too hard. Um, it was purchased in winter a couple of years ago and I shouldn't have purchased anything that winter. It got delayed in transport because we had snows and yeah just had some rot issues. It was my fault. I shouldn't have purchased it at that time. Um, probably shouldn't have been shipped at that time either. It was quite wet as well. So I've learned from that mistake and hopefully I won't have this happen again. But it's got an absolutely stunning bloom. The colour's super intense, don't you think? It's a gorgeous kind of velvety red with obviously the yellow hints coming through. So that's the Phalaenopsis ambitrana dark yellow crossed with Bellina. Next up, we've got a complex hybrid, no ID Phalaenopsis that I picked up in a grocery store a year or so ago. This one I purchased because I'd seen Miss Orchid Girl put up a video about a Phalaenopsis pink flamingo, or I think that was a commercial name. Um, and I, then I saw it in my local supermarket, so I grabbed it. Um, it's really beautiful and it's striking because it's such an intensely pigmented bright pink, uh, so the sort of pink I've never really seen before. I know it may come across purple, but it's a very kind of intense pinky purple. Um, and I hadn't seen this before on a fowl, so I picked it up because I think it's beautiful. And it tends to produce these wonderful branching displays with so many buds on. So this is one flower spike and it's branched three times. So that's quite remarkable, I think. So that's a no ID pink phalaenopsis that I think is a commercial name of flamingo or something like that. Miss Olga Girl has this, so if you look it up, it might come up with her video. Next, we're going to take a very quick look at my semi-hydro versus organic media fowls, who are both blooming at the moment. I felt like I should include this on the What's in Bloom video, but I should also probably do this as a separate video. So first we're going to take a look at my organic media phalaenopsis. We have eight buds on this one. So currently got five buds open, but another three still to come. So as you can see, the plant itself is very healthy. I've already done an update on these guys where I repotted, so I don't need to go into too much detail on that. Um, but it's a beautiful, beautiful orangey, peachy, pinkish uh, bloom that I absolutely adore. And then this is the semi-hydro fowl. Both were purchased at the same time, same hybrid from the same grocery store, and both had listed that they'd been hybridized at the same nursery. So the semi hydrophal has eight buds again, um, but it also has a flower spike branch. So it's slightly ahead in that regard, but it did form its spike first too. So we'll give the organic fowl a little bit of a chance to catch up because I don't think that that says anything at all. They're both very healthy anyway. So I will do a separate update video on these guys because I feel like bloom counts and bloom displays are also a factor when we're choosing how to grow orchids and how healthy they are and what media to choose because obviously we want flower spikes and displays. So that is my semi hydro fowl and organic fowl, both no ID um, hybrids but the same hybrid and it's absolutely beautiful. If you do have an ID for this, do let me know because I think it's absolutely beautiful and I just love, love, love this colour combination. 
Next, we have a surprise bonus orchid that I got from an order from Klasan Orchids in, um, it was back in October, I think. It was kind of my last order um, from them before winter. And they gave me this as a free orchid. It was a free gift when you spent over a certain amount. They didn't specify what it was. They just said you'd be getting a free gift. And they gave me this. So they said it was Dendrobium nobili variegata. And it arrived and I could see very clearly that the leaves were not variegated. So I knew it wasn't a Dendrobium nobili variegata. Waited kind of not expecting to see blooms this time because it didn't have that many roots. And nobili is notorious for needing a winter rest, which I didn't really give it. Kind of did. It didn't have that many roots. It grew new roots. I watered it. I fertilized it. And it's bloomed, and it looks like it is a Dendrobium nobili, but not a variegata, a variety virginalis. So this is a white or alba type form of the Dendrobium nobili, which is usually more colourful than this. But the shape is a pretty much an exact match for the Dendrobium nobili. And I popped a post up on my community page and on my Instagram asking kind of, what do people think it is? And that was kind of the common consensus from people who have much more experience with nobly types than me and nobly species. So when we talk about dendrobium nobly types, what we're often talking about is the complex hybrid nobly hybrids that we see in garden centres. This is the actual nobly species that would be used in hybridising those particular um, crosses. So this one is probably going to be more tricky to bloom. It probably will need more of a winter rest to get really good bloom displays from it. But not knowing what it was, I didn't really want to treat it that way until I had an ID and confirmation of how I should be treating it or resting it. You can see that we've got a little baby new growth starting at the base there and that this is a very skinny caned um, thin leafed dendrobium. So this is a uh, in contrast to the hybrids that we see with the big fat canes and longer kind of thicker leaves, this one is kind of tall and skinnier. So I'm interested to see what the size will be like when it's finished growing and is established and hopefully puts out a decent sized new cane in my care. I'm excited to try this dendrobium species out and it's really nice because I probably wouldn't have gone for this myself knowing that nobilies tend to be harder to bloom. One thing I haven't mentioned that I should talk about is the fragrance. It's got a beautiful fragrance. I don't usually like jasmine's fragrances, but this is a really nice jasmine fragrance with a hint of maybe rice pudding. That's a bit of a weird descriptor, but some things I definitely get rice from, which is odd. So that's the Dendrobium nobili var virginalis. Next, I actually just wanted to do a quick update because I've been super busy recently and I've failed to update you guys on some things that I wanted to talk about. So quickly, I'm gonna shoehorn these in here. Got my Tolumnia Pink Brisht, which was given to me by Nina um, in an unboxing I did fairly recently. And it came with flowers, my first Tolumnia flowers I've ever seen. And I was so excited, but also very nervous because I'm notoriously bad with Tolumnias. Um, but I potted it in Ceramis uh, with a thick gravel top layer and gravel kind of dispersed throughout and it's branching its flower spikes so yay my first ever Tolumnia blooms kind of I can take credit I guess these spikes weren't um, developed in my care but I branched them so that counts kind of right anyway I'm really excited about it and I'm really excited that I'm obviously doing something right with Nina's or um, my new Tolumnia from Nina. So this one now actually has several new growths that I'm also excited about. So I need to get it to put some roots down and create a spike on its own. And then I will be master of Tolumnias eventually. I will get these right. So that is Tolumnia pink brushed. And my Clawicia Varchevitsi is putting out a spike, which I'm really excited about. I've winter rested it and kept it kind of I've been watering it, but I've been letting it dry out between watering. I've not actually kept any water in the reservoir. It's in a self-watering system with a mixture of Leca and Sphagnum moss, because it's one of the first Catacetum types that I actually got, and I wasn't totally sure that they would be okay in just Leca. Turns out they are, um, but particularly with the Cloacea, because they have quite fine roots, I did put some moss in there, and it's done really well. And I think I might actually leave it in this pot because the moss is still quite fresh. So I think I'm going to leave it in as it is. Um, it's in a way, way, way too big a pot. So we're going to see how that goes. I'm really excited. 
And now for my last orchid in bloom for the month of February, we are looking at my purple Noidy Vanda. So this could be a Petrara Delight or there is a couple of other hybrids that look very, very similar. So I'm not confident in giving it an ID. It was just purchased as a Noidy um, Vanda that a garden centre had in. I popped this one along with a white hybrid called Princess Mikasa into a semi-hydro mix in glass vases back at the end of last year and I videoed the process. So I'm going to do an update on them specifically soon but I just wanted it as a quick update to show you that it was blooming again. Um, not always a good thing to be honest but it put down a few roots and then it put out a flower spike so I let it. The dried spike on the left is the one that it had during that repotting video so this is another spike that's put out since which actually has more flowers um, and it's not showing any overt signs of dehydration, it's not lost any leaves, it did lose some of its roots um, but it has grown new ones so I'll do a full update soon but it's doing really well it seems so I'm happy that it's kind of transitioning and flowering well this is of course is very early um it seems to have taken a little bit longer than my other vandas to adapt but this could be because it was flowering when i transitioned it it could also be because it then put out a second flower spike which obviously diverts its energy from vegetative growth it could also be because the vases were very tall they didn't fit on my shelves so it's been down on the floor by the mars light so it has been getting marginally lower light um but it seems to be doing well and I will keep you updated. I'm going to do a separate up update video as soon as possible on that. And now for probably the bit that you guys have been waiting for. And sorry to keep you in suspense. Mars Hydro Amazon have sponsored a giveaway on my channel for one of their full spectrum LED Mars TS600 grow lights. If you haven't seen my recent Vanda update video, I will link that in the corner and down below. Do check it out and you can see how they're doing under that light and in semi hydro. But the winner of that giveaway is Tina Corda. I hope I'm pronouncing that right. Um, I will leave a message on your original comment entering the giveaway and tell you how to get in touch with me for um, us to get that light out to you. Thanks so much for entering and I'm sorry to all the guys that didn't win. Hopefully I'll be able to do more in the future. And I do have a couple more giveaways planned in the nearish future and uh, not necessarily for LED grow lights but for orchids. So stick around and hopefully I'll be able to give other people um, some new orchids to try out as well. Thanks so much for watching today and if you did enjoy this video don't forget to give it a like or subscribe to my channel for more regular orchid updates and I will see you guys later. Bye!